Hi everyone, welcome back to Skywatch Weekly. My name is Nick. This week we've got the return of the moon, also continued views of Mercury in the west after sunset, and a great view of the International Space Station coming up on Sunday. We'll show you when and where to look. Let's jump right to it. Starting off tonight, Wednesday, May 27th, looking about an hour after sunset here. So this is going to be right around 9.15 p.m. Plenty of things to look for here, including, as I mentioned, the moon. The moon making a good appearance, uh, currently a waxing crescent phase. Uh, coming up this Friday, it'll be a first quarter moon half lit. Uh, for now, it's going to be in between two constellations. You should know pretty well by now. We've got the Gemini twins low in the west. And to the upper left of the moon tonight, we've got Leo the lion. So the moon actually right now in the constellation of Cancer the crab, uh, you might know that is a super dim constellation. Very tough to see, even from a dark sky. And uh, any amount of moonlight there is going to really wash out those stars. But look for the moon in between Leo and those Gemini twins. At the feet of Gemini, we do have that planet Mercury. We'd mentioned it in the video last week near Venus and also the moon for a couple nights there. Now it's all by its lonesome, really but well worth a look. And really now through the early part of June when it reaches its uh, furthest extent from the sun, uh, well worth a look. A little bit north of that western horizon view. Well, we're going to move here a little bit later on in the night. It's going to about two hours after sunset. By now Mercury has set and we have at least from a dark sky location, the sky really as dark as it's going to get. Something else you might notice in the sky, not only this week, but really any time you're out looking up, are moving points of light in the sky. Not airplanes that blink, but steady points of light. What you're seeing are satellites launched by humans into orbit around the Earth, where their orbits crisscross the sky and envelop our planet. These satellites orbit high enough that they can be illuminated by the sun while visible in our nighttime sky. There are currently over 2,000 active satellites and many more inactive ones along with old launch vehicles and other space debris. On a given night, if the conditions are right, you can see dozens of satellites passing overhead. But there's one in particular that really catches the eye. The International Space Station puts on quite a show as it passes overhead. It can be as bright as Venus in the sky, easily outshining the stars. So what makes it so different? Well, let's take a closer look. The ISS orbits about 240 miles above Earth's surface, traveling at around 5 miles per second. It's a huge orbiting laboratory, powered by solar panels that cover roughly the area of an American football field. Here, astronauts from around the world can live, work, and study our planet from above. Here we're watching where the ISS will be this Sunday night just after 9.30 p.m. as it passes over Chicagoland and the rest of the Midwest. Well, it's quite a view from up here, but what can you expect to see from the ground? Well, as big as it is, the ISS will only appear as a point of light in the sky. Keep in mind, it's still over 200 miles away when it's straight overhead. Now, with a good camera and a nice telescope, you can get tricky and capture pictures of it, like these that I took back in 2018. To the naked eye, though, it will be a point of light. Here's a map of this Sunday's space station pass from a website called heavens-above.com. Now, maps like this might make you a little nervous. You're not quite sure what to make of it, but let's walk you through it. Let's figure out how to read this map and find out when and where to look for the space station. Overall, the white circle is the sky. The top of the sky is at the center, and around the edges, you can see cardinal directions. 
The diagonal black line is the path the space station will take across the sky, and to the upper right is the direction northwest. Along the line you see these time markers showing when the space station will reach these spots, and also an arrow helpfully showing the direction of movement. The ISS will appear low in the northwest at about 9.35 central time, but you likely won't be able to see it for a couple of minutes past that. It's still too low, too far away, and the reflected sunlight is getting dimmed by all the atmosphere it's shining through. By 9.38, it should be very visible in between Gemini and Origa. And by 9.39, it'll start its pass through the Big Dipper. Now, keep in mind, it's just a point of light moving through the sky, but it's moving at five miles a second. And by Sunday evening, there will be at least three people on board and possibly as many as five. That depends on how the launch of Crew Dragon goes this week. Well, after reaching the top of the sky near the Big Dipper's handle, watch for the space station to continue its pass to the southeast, eventually crossing the sky in about six minutes. All right, so you might be wondering, okay, when else can I see this? Is it only on Sunday night? What if it's rainy? Well, it is visible every night from tonight, Wednesday, through Sunday, and even beyond. Every night there's a visible pass. We enter certain seasons with the space station when for several weeks at a time it'll be visible every night. Sometimes it'll be visible in the mornings. Not as much of an easy time to see it then. But over the next few nights, plenty of chances to see it. However, I chose this particular pass on Sunday to highlight for you because number one, it's at a reasonable hour. It's just after 9.30 p.m. Some of these other passes are after 11. Well, you might already be in bed. It's also nice and high in the sky. Some of these other passes are kind of low, not quite as bright, not as easy to see. And this one also passes through the Big Dipper, a pattern of stars that I hope by now you're familiar with in the sky. And if not, it should be easy to identify up there, high up at the top of the sky. But if you're curious about when else it might be visible, or perhaps you're not from Chicago, you're wondering where you can see it from where you are, a couple of recommendations that I would make. First would be the Heavens Above app. This is available for both Android and iOS devices. Plenty of information here, maybe too much, depends. All sorts of details on things to look for. Things like the Starlink constellation of satellites, old rocket bodies that are tumbling up there in space, and of course things like the space station itself. I've also recommended in the past a personal recommendation of the Stellarium app. This is the Stellarium Plus app that you're seeing here. Great just for getting to know the sky and constellations, other things to look for, but also passes like this of satellites. Here we have the space station, also a Starlink satellite going overhead as well. So all sorts of stuff to see up there, and I'd really recommend getting out there and seeing some of it for yourself. So that's what we've got for you this week. The challenge is to get out there and see this stuff for yourself. Hopefully you can see an artificial satellite, ideally the International Space Station. But whatever it is, get out there, let us know what you saw, when and where it was. We'll try and identify it up there for you. Well, don't forget to subscribe to Skywatch Weekly. Plenty of great content coming your way every Wednesday. Also, don't forget to follow the Adler Planetarium on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Have a great week, and we'll see you next time.